now, from Hollywood, Romance. The French have a word for it, ennui. Literally, I guess it's boredom. When the routine becomes too routine, ennui sets in. And the remedy is almost always the same. Whatever is routine for you, from housework to the din of a steel mill, the best solution is to get away from it all. So now, with John Daner as Cecil, we bring you Kathleen Heights' transcribed comedy, The Quiet Time. Something inside me told me not to read the article, but my curiosity was overpowering, and it prevailed. The title first piqued my interest. I suppose that's what titles are for, after all. But this one, Is Noise Driving You Crazy, seemed somehow to have my name on it. Oh, not, not really, you understand. It didn't really say, Is Noise Driving You Crazy, Cecil Botts? <laughs> no, its appeal was much more subtle. And at length, I read it. And frankly, I didn't sleep too well that night. The next morning, I was downright testy when I arrived at the office. Good morning, Mr. Potts. Morning, Genevieve. Why? Uh, good morning, Genevieve. Oh, yes, indeed. Why, Mr. Potts, you're as pale as can be. Don't you feel good? Don't say that. Don't you dare undermine me. I am in the pink. The pink, you understand? I don't know. You're awful pale to be in the pink. Miss Cruikshank, the pigment of my skin is entirely my own affair. I'll be in my office. Uh, before you go in, Mr. Not Barker. another word. You're supposed to be a combination file clerk and stenographer. And you are not paid to fire salvos at my self-confidence. Uh, but, Mr. Barker. I feel fine. I feel fine. I feel fine. Good, good, good morning, Mr. Turk. Mr. Turk's waiting in your office. That will be all, Genevieve. And close the door as you leave. I hope I didn't detect anger in our voice this morning, Bots. No, no, sir. Oh, um, we're raising our voice, Bots. I'm sorry, Mr. Turk. I, <laughs> I didn't have too good a night. Restless, nervous. I, I didn't sleep well. Not cracking up, are we, Bots? Oh, no, no, sir. No oh. fit. That's what we are. In the pink. The pink. Well, sit down, Bots. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I've been talking with personnel, Bots. Oh? We have a family problem. Hmm? One we must meet coolly, reasonably, objectively. Hmm? Uh, Bots. Yes, sir? Must we twitch? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't realize we were twitching. Well, we are. Oh, by George, Bots, we're not measuring up. We're not playing the game. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Turk. You're quite right. We are not playing the game. We are... I, I am... It is... I mean... I'm giving way, sir. I really feel I need a quiet time, sir. A quiet time, but... Uh, only to improve my efficiency. I've not really had a vacation since 1946, Mr. Turk, and... I thought perhaps a couple of weeks out of harness, so to speak. Improve our efficiency, huh? I believe it would, sir. Uh, to tell you the truth, I never thought of it just this way before, but last I night, like I... like that, but I like that. That shows we're thinking of the team. Yes, sir. All right, we'll sideline you. We'll send in a reserve and, <laughs> and keep you fresh for the fourth quarter. <laughs> Good idea. Good thinking, but... Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, about last night... I was reading something that seemed to me Three weeks. to be... That's what Turk Iron Steel thinks of you, Bots. Three weeks with pay. Oh, well, I am grateful, Mr. Turk. Uh, grateful? Uh, no, I am grateful, sir. Thank you. Uh, now then, about my reading last night, sir, I thought that reading, you... Reading, yes. Reminds me, personnel says we have to strike another periodical from our reading list. <laughs> a current article is apt to have a disquieting effect. Is noise driving you crazy? Oh, well, sir, I was just <laughs> trying to tell you... this idea. <laughs> well, 
Not your problem, eh, Bots, eh? <laughs> oh. 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 oh, he's a good scout, Mr. Turkey is. At Christmas time, he personally handed out to each employee of Turk Iron and Steel an autograph recording of the Anvil Chorus. Long playing and he insisted on calling his own travel agent to arrange a trip for me. Now, you're not going to find that kind of employer every day of the week. No, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Mr. Botts, and Cecil I... Cecil Botts, but of course. Oh, uh, of, of course? I should have recognized you. Mr. Turk described you perfectly, right down to the twitch. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, well... Here I am. Come in and sit down, Mr. Botts. We have some wonderful plans for you. Oh, is that a fact? Well, now Mr. I... Mr. Turk and I thought you'd want to get right out of town. Oh, that's true. True. Now, I thought that... We thought we'd relieve you of all responsibility, Mr. Botts. You won't have to think about anything, worry about anything, anything about anything. What do you think of that? Oh, I think that's... Just now, Mr. Turk and I have drawn up several suggestions for you, Mr. Botts. First, we thought perhaps a tour of Mr. Turk's Canadian steel mills might prove diverting. Oh, oh, now, no. Mercy, I, I just don't believe that I... That is, I had in mind something a bit more... It uh, doesn't spark you, eh? Oh, well, spark, yes, but to tell you the truth... It's all right, Mr. Botts. Of course, I had taken the trouble to check plane and train connections. Then there was the matter of guide and canoe for the pack trip. The pack, pack trip? Part of the steel mill tour, Mr. Botts. But if you're not interested... Oh, dear. No, I really feel terrible about not that. Not at all. Here we have again a suggestion from Mr. Turk and myself. And may I say that this is, of course, top secret, Mr. Botts, and subject to the usual security checks. My goodness. We might, might, mind you, arrange a trip to an atomic proving ground. Atomic? Oh, well, now, I, I hope you have not gone to a lot of trouble on that, because... Oh, oh, it, it was a lot of trouble, wasn't it? Just a few calls to Washington. That's all, Mr. Botts. Well, I know I'm disappointing you. Hurt is a better word. I am sorry. Oh, dear. oh? I'm just presuming Formosa is out, too. Well? Man to man, Mr. Botts, what are your ideas about your vacation? I uh, suppose it sounds foolish, but I really had in mind something like, um, uh, well, um, well th that poster over there. Now, that appeals to me. A Caribbean cruise? Well, yes, I... Something wrong with a Caribbean cruise? I suppose not. If you like balmy days on shipboard, moonlit nights in the tropics, quiet white beaches, beautiful women, if that sort of thing appeals to you, I won't stand in your way, Mr. Butts. <laughs> You can imagine the excitement of the next two days. Getting a few precautionary shots, traveler's checks, a money belt, packing, and countless little things. I can't deny it, I stole away from the office early on sailing day. I, I sensed a little farewell party brewing, and my nerves, I, I knew, would, would never stand it. I checked in aboard ship well in advance of sailing time and slipped quietly down to my stateroom. Oh, oh, my. Oh, oh, my. Surprise. Oh, oh, what? Thought we could sneak away, but... <laughs> well, no, no, I... wanted to start your trip with a bang, Mr. Oh, Botts. Well, that's very nice, I, I must say. Come on, Mr. Botts, the ginger ale's been cold for half an hour. <laughs> oh, there you are, Miss Cruikshank. Now, Mr. Botts, you know very well you always call me Genevieve, unless you're a tiny bit upset with me. <laughs> yes, well, I don't... Oh, 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 oh steady, oh, that, Botts. Oh, that's... Only the ginger ale. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, now, let's start the music and make a party of it. M music? <laughs> Compliments of the boys in the plant, Mr. Botts. Their way of saying, have a nice rest. <laughs> 
The record player is from personnel, boss. Employee relations. Well, that, <laughs> that's very nice, sir. Oh, uh, we'll uh, check it in when we return, eh, boss? Hmm? Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> indeed, sir. Well, play on, Miss Crookshank. Okay, I'll put it on. And wait you. A good rest, Bots. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, oh, take that record with you. Oh, we sure will. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, Mr. Bots. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just a real bone vibe, Mr. Bots. Just a real. Oh, well, thank you. All right, Many now, thanks come on, everybody. We'll have to get much. back yes. to the office. Very yes, thoughtful sir. of you. Thank Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh. Oh, well. Three weeks of peace. I'm quiet ahead. Let me see now where I can put this suitcase here. Up here now. No, no, not that. No, no, not that ever. No. I'll put this one over here now. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. Many a wintry man. Moon Jack comes home again. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. Oh, Here I am, Cecile. Here I am. Ma- ma- madam, please. Cecile. Can you be Cecile? Indeed, I cannot be, madam. Well, is that peculiar? This is A Deck, State Room 19. Yes, it is, but. Well, you can see for yourself. My ticket reads A Deck, State Room 19. Well, so does mine. But I inquired of the steward, and he told me my roommate was Cecile Bott. Oh, dear. Well, well now we're <laughs> going to have to. Of course, I should have known it was some sort of mistake. <laughs> All the unlikely names in the world. <laughs> Cecile Botts. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm Flora Thor, Mr. Uh... Botts, madam. Cecil without an E, Botts. Mr. Botts. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, no need to be in such a hurry, Mr. Botts. Uh, I mean, uh, after dinner will be time enough to move. <laughs> and uh, by that time, who can tell? <laughs> One of us might be willing to change your name. <laughs> I beg your pardon, madam. Oh, Mr. Bob. We will return to romance and our story, The Quiet Time, in just a moment. And now for the second act of Romance. I dare say I was twitching to a fairly well by the time I located the steward. I managed to tell him the dilemma of Miss Flora Thor and my great need for a quiet time. Together we went to the purser and thrashed the situation out. Fortunately, some last-minute cancellation left one stateroom on the entire ship vacant, and wonder of all wonders, they were able to promise me that I could have it all to myself. This way, Mr. Botts. Oh, yes, indeed, steward. Watch the steps. Sir. Whoop. <laughs> Thank you. Sailing down the bounding main. Wintry wind. Uh, this is the B deck, sir. We go this way. Oh, all right. Jack comes home again. Well, now I... Uh, this way, sir. Ah, uh, oh. Well. I don't suppose... Uh-uh. This way, sir. See here, I, I'll have to rest a bit. Just a few more steps to your cabin. Mr. Oh Potts. well, then, I guess it's worth it for the privacy. Oh, surely no one will bother you down here, oh, sir. Well, that's good. Good. Here we are, sir. This is my stateroom. How's that, Mr. Box? 
I say, it sounds like the engine room. Oh, no, sir. That's the door. Oh, the engines won't bother you, Mr. Fox. The walls in here are soundproof. <laughs> It's surprising what you can get used to uh, if you have to. True, I had the powerful turbines chunking away there in the hold of the ship, but on a deck, well, let me put it this way, the very thought of Miss Flora Thor kept me blissfully below decks without dinner even the entire night. Toward morning, I chunked myself to sleep, and later I braved the main deck and after breakfast sank happily to sleep again in my deck chair. Mm. Ah. No. Oh, hi, it's Mr. Potts. <laughs> Cecile. Oh, my goodness. It is you, Miss Thor. Not the same Flora Thor you met last night, Mr. Bud. Not the least tiny bit the same Flora Thor. Well, I must say I'm glad to hear oh, that. Oh, there's air. There's nothing in the world like sea air. That's what's done the trick for me, Mr. Butts. Changed me completely. Overnight. Yes. Well... Breathe, Mr. Butts. Breathe in. I always breathe in. More deeply. On count now. One, two, three, breathe in. Now, see here. Hold your breath, Mr. Mutt. Oh, this is ridiculous. Exhale. Now, on count again. Miss Thor. Mr. Butt, you're florid. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I am thoroughly enraged. What? No buts, don't interrupt me. I haven't finished a sentence since our unfortunate meeting last night. As a matter of fact, I have finished very few sentences without interruption for some time, and I am sick and tired of it. Hmm. Now, I will not be organized, Miss Thor. I shall breathe when I want to breathe. I refuse to do it on count. I was sound asleep when you bounded past here blowing that infernal whistle. Oh, no, oh, oh. You don't like my little whistle, huh? <laughs> it's a regular trademark of mine, Mr. Butt. Oh, my, I'm speaking out of turn, aren't I? Well, I was almost finished. Now, you are a grown woman, Miss Thor. Going about blowing whistles is a most unwomanly thing to do. Not in my gym classes, it isn't. I couldn't keep those girls in order a minute without my little whistle. I'm a symbol of authority, Mr. Bott. Well, I find it hard to believe that there's a school system in the United States which permits their young ladies to be whistled at, officially. Who said anything about a school system? I'm a volunteer gym teacher in our state prison for women. And if you don't think I need a symbol of authority when those girls step out of line... Wouldn't it be kinder to machine gun them? Well, I... <laughs> Mr. Botts, what a delicious sense of humor. You and I are going to get along beautifully. Oh, no. <laughs> Come along now. Let's test our sea legs, Mr. Botts. No, please, now, don't lift me up, Miss Thor. I told you, I, I simply will not be organized. Come along, or I'll blow my whistle. No, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm up. There's a good sport, Mr. Botts. On count now. One, two, three. You may think me harsh and unfeeling, but you may as well know. I'd have struck her, save for the fact that she outweighed me two pounds to one all the way. Naturally, I, I, I was desperate. I abandoned ship at San Juan, Puerto Rico, and took a non-scheduled flight to Mona Island, uh, to the west. There, at last, I felt safe. The sea, the white sand beside it, the bright moon above it. Ah. Oh. A quiet time. Ah, a quiet time. Hmm. Is you, Alberto? Hmm? Why, you roam from Lolita. You must oh. never roam from Lolita. We have promised, no? Oh, you are only love in all the world. Hmm. What is the struggle, Alberto? I come back to you. You run away, no? I find you. Oh, Alberto. Hmm. Alberto? Well, no, not really, no. No? I, no, no. You are not Alberto. No. Who are you? I, I am uh, Cecil Botts. And you see... Cecil Botts? Uh, yes. And you must be Lolita. Lolita. Cecil Botts. You Americano? Um, uh, si. Uh, yes. Uh, natural born citizen oh. of America. You rich Americano? Oh, oh no, uh, that is to say, not really, of course. Uh, 
Well, I do have a few holdings, but I'm not what you would call... Oh, uh, uh, holdings? Well, just a few stocks and bonds uh, and... Rich Americano, like Lolita? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, uh, see. But what about Alberto? Alberto? I do not see Alberto. Do you? No. No, but he may be here someplace. I mean... Oh. Uh, oh. 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 I did... What about Alberto? Who? You come with Lolita, no? Well, I... No, 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 no. Well, that is to say, <clears throat> yes. You catch, Lolita? Catch? Oh, catch. Well, I'm in pretty good trim. I'll tell you. Here I come. Catch, catch. Wait for me. Oh. Your... Hacienda? Please. You come in? Why, I I certainly will. It's very gracious of you, and oh, Lolita. You don't know what all this peace and loveliness of your island does to me. Oh. This is the way to live, Lolita. Oh, dear. You come in? I come in. Do what with the head? So, with the head? Huh? Is something new? Huh? Is yes, something old? I, I'm, I'm, I'm too twitching. Hey, everybody! Mambo twitching! Welcome home, Mr. Bot. Ole, Genevieve. How was the trip? Oh, wild, Genevieve. I, I come into my office. I'll tell you all about it. Uh, before you go in, no, Mr. No, Bot come along, Genevieve. Uh, uh, by the way, have I ever told you that you have the loveliest voice I ever heard? No, you haven't, Mr. Bot. But listen, I... I got... feel fine. I, I feel fine. I feel... <laughs> Flora? <laughs> you can't lose me this time, Mr. Bot. I'm the new head of employee recreation. <laughs> Romance is produced and directed by Norman McDonald with editorial supervision by Hep Mannheim. You have heard The Quiet Time, specially written for Romance by Kathleen Height, starring John Daner. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dopkin, Vic Perrin, Mary Lansing, Edgar Barrier, Virginia Christine, and Lillian Bayef. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to hear Romance, transcribed next week at the same time. <laughs>